And a warm welcome to today's listeners. Allow me to introduce myself as the host of today's episode. My name is Amanda Dunas. I'm the founder of the Positive Thinking Clinic located at Wallow Creek, Sydney. Here at the Positive Thinking Clinic, I see clients of all ages. I see individuals, couples, families, and small groups. I conduct psychotherapy and use a variety of modalities delivered through counseling techniques and hypnotherapy. I am a professional counsellor, clinical hypnotherapist and strategic psychotherapist. I'm an early childhood teacher and an NLP master practitioner. To learn more about what I do and what I offer, visit my website www.positivethinkingclinic.com.au. The easiest way to connect with me on social media is to search my name, Amanda Dunas, or my clinic, Positive Thinking Clinic. You may also access my social media at the bottom of my website. I am the author of My Coping Skills Handbook, aimed at kids aged to 12 years of age. I have also turned this into an online course. I have a range of podcasts that can be found on amandadunas.podbean.com. In addition to the Positive Thinking Clinic, I am the owner of four early learning centres. I am passionate about quality care and emotional wellness of all ages. I believe we set the foundation for emotional wellness from a very young age. My early learning centres are licensed as positive living skills services. I also have an emotional wellness and kids Facebook group. One of my greatest hobbies is learning. I think I am always enrolled in a variety of courses, no matter how small. I enjoy adding to my skill set. As an integrative therapist, I learn diverse skills and select the best fit for any situation. If you wonder if I have any other hobbies, I am also into fitness. I have run a number of marathons, including two ultra marathons. So that's me in a nutshell. If you want to get in touch, you can use the contact form on my website, positivethinkingclinic.com.au. I would love to hear from you. Signing out and moving forward, you're listening to Amanda Dunas. Joining us today is Tony Langford from TLC, Tony Langford Counselling, and is our gaimi based counselling and clinical supervision service. She offers face-to-face -face and Zoom counselling and supervision to individuals, couples, families and groups. Tony's passion is relationship problems and issues. She likes educating people to understand what the other person is saying and not to put their feelings or their filters and perspectives on what they think that they are hearing. The key to good or even great communication is not to be a good talker, Tony says, it's to be a good or even greater listener. Since 2005, Tony has been helping people deal with their day-to-day -day lives, supporting them to find better ways of communicating. She has also run emotional eating workshops through most of Southern Sydney's Curves Women's Health Centres, as well as providing clinical supervision and mentoring for counsellors and hypnotherapists, either face-to-face, -face, Zoom or groups. Communication starts with understanding ourselves first, says Tony. If we can't understand or identify with what we want, how can anyone else understand us? Once we have that clarity, understanding what other people are saying is the next step. Communication is a gift, not a weapon, yet we are all guilty of using it to hurt and to wound. Simplifying and debunking how we all communicate and yes, there will be generalizations is the base of any good relationship, especially the one with ourselves. It's not rocket science, says Tony. If a dog and cat can happily live together, then why can't two people of the same species do the same? Why can't they get along without fighting? As a counselor, Tony's role is to become redundant. Once someone has reconnected with their own internal strengths and coping strategies, then she says she should no longer be needed. When they have struggles in the future, they now have plans and skills to use instead of having to involve others. 
You can find out more about Tony Langford on www.tlcforcounseling.com.au. She does face-to-face -face sessions at GAMI. You can locate her at Twitter at Your Counselor, Facebook, TLC, Tony Langford Counseling. She's done a Diploma of Holistic Counseling, Bachelor Degree in Counseling, Clinical Supervision Qualifications, Training and Assessment Qualifications. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Okay, Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate that you've got the time so that we can create this wonderful episode for our listeners. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. So, Tony, we're going to work on a topic that you're quite you've got a lot of strength in and a lot of knowledge, which means you've got a lot of power and you do a really, really great job. You've got a great reputation. So we're going to discuss communication techniques for couples. Mm. Now, it doesn't take an expert to know that this is a really important topic for absolutely everybody, even if they're not in a crisis. Do you agree? Oh, definitely. And I think, you know, Society puts a lot of pressure on communication and and I think people misunderstand what a good communicator is. A good communicator is not someone that knows how to use words. A good communicator is actually a good listener. Absolutely. I totally agree with that because it's when we interfere and we stop listening to the other person, that communication breaks down. So who's at fault there? Is it that we all need to learn how to listen a little bit better? Well, a, a perfect example is I had a couple last week I've been working with um, for a, you know, a month or so, and they're in, they're in really big crisis. They've got uh, three young girls, um, they both work, uh, and she doesn't feel like she's supported Yet he's he's busting his buns trying to support her. Yet when she he says, "What can I do for you?" She says, "Nothing." Well, and she expects him to figure it out, or she already told him last week. And men, and it's not it's not a um, a get out of jail free card. They're quite simple creatures. They need to be informed, not told informed of what it is we want because if they try and figure it out themselves they're going to get it wrong nearly every single time and it just sets both up for failure so this couple I had in last week were actually you know they came in and, and straight away I knew their non-verbals were screaming and they you know she, she wouldn't help like I said do you need a deep breath no nope, no nope. and I was like oh god this is going to be fun and within 15 minutes, they are at each other. And I mean, like, she was standing up in the chair, like kneeling, facing him, screaming at him, and he's yelling at her. And I'm like, they're not listening to what the other person is saying. They're doing yeah. what we call topping. You know, well, I'm really tired. Well, so am I tired. Yeah, but I've had the kids all day. Yeah, but I've had to commute. And it's like, if, you know, when someone says I'm tired, if you say so am I, then you dismiss that first yeah. speaker. And our role as a listener is to actually do something different. And whatever that yeah. is, whether it's, wow, that's really awful. What happened? Why are you so yeah. tired? Oh, you know, it's okay. Yeah, I can understand my day's been pretty full on. How about we, we sit down and have a cuppa or a wine or a whatever. How about we go for a walk? And it's about breaking that cycle of that yeah. topping or peeing It's match. a pattern. Everybody, you know, the way you describe that to me, and obviously that brings up... Um, I have some clients that I see for couples or relationships and even families, mm. even, even um, work groups. It's all about communication. And sometimes when I'm watching as an observer, I notice that actually both sides are right. Both sides have valid arguments. No one is listening. So our job is then to bridge that and say, how, how do we find the new pattern or the new mm. formula so that you can both be heard mm. and both be listened to and listen to one another? How mm. do you teach that? What do you well, do? several ways. First of all, we can do things like, um, it, it's quite a, 
I don't know, it's quite a, a woo-woo thing to do. And it's uh, it, it's called a talking stick and it can be, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest a pair of scissors, <laughs> but a something like, a you know, I've got a, a penguin here. So it can be like a, a squeeze thing. Um, it can be a pen. It can be whoever has cube, the talk, some kind of cue. Whoever has that has the floor. And the idea is it's, you know, when someone's saying I've had a really bad day, stop going. Because what happens is, I suppose, physiologically, what happens is when we're really tired and we're breathing from our chest, we're unable to use our front brain, which is our logical thinking brain. We get drawn back to that crocodile brain, the flight, fight, freeze. And in that flight, fight, freeze part of the brain, we don't form new memories. And it's, I call it, we hit the play button or, or the, the re, replay button on Gilligan's Island or Friends or whatever it is. It's a rerun. And when, and, and I know that straight away by the language I hear. If, if I have a client or a friend or a partner say to me, you always, this never, whenever those really grand statements are made, they're not in the now, they're in the past. It's yeah. like, you know, oh, you know, um, I hate coming to Wallay Creek. You can never get parking. And you go, oh, okay, so where did you park today? Oh, I got a parking spot right out the front. It's like, oh, so you parked here today. Oh, yeah, but normally I don't. It's like, oh, okay, so sometimes. And I catch people in that language. And I, I educate my listeners. Like, you know, so if, if a partner says to them, oh, you, all, you never listen. It's like, okay, you're not hearing her. You're not feeling heard. What is it you need to say? And it's about being able to go, okay, we can see when our partners or someone we love or even someone we don't know, when they're starting to escalate, when they're starting to get, um, you know. Emotionally aroused. Yeah, they, they're elevating. So we can go, okay, I can continue to just not listen or I can go, okay, I can see something's wrong. If I don't stay in front brain and I let my you know, myself be dragged back into that cave of anxiety and, and flight, fight, freeze, then I'm just going to uh, participate in this. Yeah, if I can bring up a really, I'll bring up one point, only that you're, you're triggering um, my, yeah. uh, my brainstorming here, and I really like that. We work well together. We've known each other for so uh, many years. I'm good so, at that. Yes, you are. Now, yeah, I get it. We've got the front logical brain and the emotional, uh, let's call it the emotional side back there. I know that when we're highly aroused with emotion, we can't think clear. So if ever yeah. we're in a state of heightened anxiety or extreme fear or some kind of overwhelm, we can't make logical decisions at that moment. I've experienced that myself where I've turned to my friend and said, oh, I can't think straight. I'm really upset about something. So can you make that decision for me? And so you just brought up about when someone's feeling really aroused emotionally, it really does interfere with their rational brain and they can't speak logically and calmly. So obviously it's really important that couples recognize that, okay, you're extremely emotional right now. I'm not going to neglect you, but this might not be the right time. Yeah. What one way I, I've noticed this works really well, and I know they're not couples, but let's say relationships, kids. I learned it through my training, and I'm not talking about little kids, teenagers. Oh, yeah. a, a really important thing that I learned on this Empowering Parents course is um, the, the lecturer said, when your child is inviting you to a party, it's up to you if you want to attend. In other words, if your child is inviting you to an argument, you have a choice. You don't need to attend it. Now, let's take that learning to couples. If one is really emotionally aroused and they're not going to be logical, they might be looking for a fight and inviting their partner to that party. Right. That partner doesn't need to attend, right? And, and I think what needs to be done even one step back is that relationship with self, that self narrative that we have of, you know, we have, we have a belief structure or we think, no, I don't want to go out on Saturday night yet our partner comes home or, or the kids want to go somewhere and we acquiesce. We go, Oh, 
Okay. And then we, we get annoyed with ourselves, yet we take it out on our partner. Um, you know, I, I've got a, I've got a strong belief about when, when someone says to me, oh, I'm fine. You know, if they go, oh, yeah, I'm fine. You look at the nonverbals, oh, I'm fine. It's like, okay, well, if you put that fine into a dot point, it means effed up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. So when someone, you know, in a couple situation, if I teach my clients, if the partner says, I'm fine, it's like, hmm, because, you know, you've got to be able to say fine. So um, fine is no longer um, part of the, the, the relationship vocabulary. And one step back from that, and I really want to make this point, and most people don't get this. I'm a sealed unit. You're a sealed unit. I think of those old fuses, like the little glass ones with the, the yeah. aluminium. At the yeah. I'm one of them. You're one of them. My office manager who's just walked in the cat <laughs> is, is one. And so between you and I, we have a third entity, which is the relationship we produce or that yeah. we contribute to. So I, I, I look at it this way. You can't take uh, uh, rancid meat and moldy vegetables and put them get together and make a healthy sandwich. The sandwich being the metaphor of the relationship. If I have dysfunction and you have dysfunction, and that can be in the thinking process, belief structures, expectations, then we're never gonna make that healthy relationship. And it's about taking ownership. I'm the first person, if I stuff up or do something wrong, it's like, that was me, because I'd rather just get it over and done with. And people uh, appreciate when you just go, oh, no, that was my fault, shouldn't have done it, I've learned from it. So it's mm -hmm. about not blaming the other person for how you feel, because you were probably feeling that before the argument started, you, as you said, that you, you, you were you were sending out an invitation for a fight, and instead of saying, "I'm in a crappy mood, I need to go and get," I, I call me, I'm just reaching over, I'm getting my anger management tool, <laughs> fly swat. I'm going upstairs and I'm going to flog the mat in the office now. Leave me alone for half an hour, and I get rid of whatever it is that's that I may not be able to name. And then when I can put and recognize I've got an emotion, be able to uh, name that emotional feeling, emotion, emotional feeling, then I can come and have a conversation about it mm. or a dialogue. Because a conversation is like a bracket and a dialogue is a continuation. And just because your partner says, I want Italian for dinner tonight, and you, and you go, oh, I want a Thai. So, okay, we'll go to Karen Bar and I'll go over to the Indian restaurant and you can go to the Thai and they can get the thing. And we'll go home and have a, you know, a, a takeaway or we'll go and have a picnic with it when the, the weather's yeah. nicer of an evening. And I think it's about, it's almost that silly comment about, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? And I don't <laughs> think it should be said in the context of happy wife happy life like you know we you have to you know bend and bow and straight to the female or the, the wife of the family um it's about well is it really you know is it something i'm going to worry about on my deathbed in a week's time is it going to worry me that i didn't convert the other person to my way of thinking so there's another step backwards of okay when we argue it's about making the other person change their belief structure to what we believe and you yeah. can take something as as um, sensitive as um, Trump versus Biden even though it's not our politics everybody has an opinion here in Australia yeah, absolutely. some people are, are Trump Trump supporters some people definitely not now if someone wants to argue with me for or against Trump's um, belief belief structure that's okay if they're trying to convert me well then that's where the problem is yeah you know, one of the thing, one of the techniques I like to often start with when I have couples mm. is to take less focus off the other person and more focus on yourself first. Because yeah. we yeah. don't get very far when it's always, oh, she, 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 or he, he, he. Mm. Take that away because you can't control she and he. And That's let's right. see what you can control on the inside of you. It's okay to feel emotional. It's okay yeah. to feel angry or whatever Sad, feelings you have. Happy, yep. Exactly. But your reactions and your responses, you're in control of that. That's, I like what you just said there. Now, and this is something people don't think about. With our language, um, 
when you react, that's a redo, you react. So it's about when you react to something, it's that, it's almost like a visceral, it's, it's an instinct thing we do. It's, you know, you, you have a, you, know, you, you get a, a bladder squeeze and say, like, oh, I've got to go to the bathroom. That's yeah. a reaction. <laughs> what we need to go do is, is a response of, oh, I need to go to the toilet sometime in the next half an hour. So it's about setting up our communication for, for success. And, you know, a lot of the time, I, I, when, when I'm going to generalise here. Men are fixers. You know, they're, they're rolling life, they're wired to fix things. So, yeah. you know, if, if we as women come home and go, oh, that Karen and this and that, blah, 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 and they're doing it again and they go, well, just don't listen to them. And it's like, stop telling me what to do, which is one of the big things that I hear a lot of. So... There's three things you, you, when my friends and my, my family know, tell me what they want from, a, a, you know, when they ring or when they face to face, do they want a debrief, which is a vent. And I imagine I'm holding a big black garbage bin and they're vomiting their debrief into it. My role is to go, mm, oh, wow. You know, and then when they're finished, I put the lid on it and I put it out for the garbage to pick up. So that's the first one. The second one is opinion. So an opinion is, well, that sucks, or what are you going to do about it? It's, it's an opening statement of, you know, well, that'd be really hard to take because that's, a, a, that's an opinion. Advice is the third thing. So it's, um, it's a debrief, opinion, and a device. And a device isn't, you've got to do something because when you say you or she, it's the pointing of the finger and straight away, you know, it's like, oh, you've got to calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. So you take yeah. it back and go, okay, well, if I was in your situation or when I've had that happen to me and you'll find people are more, I, I, you're more invitational with your, your information opposed to confrontational when you have to sort this out. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it take, it's taking it back to basics and taking responsibility for how you feel. If you've had a crappy day, you say to your partner, I've had a crappy day. I need just 10 minutes of quiet. I'm just going to go and walk around the backyard or the, 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 you know, walk down the street, whatever it is, figure out what you need to have a shower is a good one. Lock the bedroom door, go and have a shower mm -hmm. and imagine the stress running off and then go, okay, what was it about figuring out what the emotion is naming it? And what do you have to do about it? And as it, if it's anger or frustration, the fly swat, if it's, if it's something to do with work, you know, schedule it, you go, okay, I'm at home now. I'm not answering the phone, you know, and this is where, you know, with working from home, it's very pollutive. You know, it metastasizes, work metastasizes into our private life. So having a workspace, like this is my home office. When I finish, mm. I close the door and I don't come back in here. And yeah. we, and it's so much, so much harder working from home with COVID and having a relationship in that same environment. Both. Definitely, I totally agree with you. There's some really important and valid points. And you also reminded me of another thing. I have found it, and I don't, I don't know if you experience the same pattern. When couples come into me for couples relationship counselling, mm. do you find that you also realise that you end up doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with each one as well? No. And the reason, I, I used to, but I've been going for 15, as you know, 15 years now, and I find it's much more useful unless someone's got to give some information that they want to learn how to um, discuss with their partner and it's too volatile when they're in the room. When you've got the two people in the room, it's so much, I love couples work because when you've got the two of them in the room and all of a sudden, you, because they, as you know, people are much more polite other than my clients last week. Um, and much more, and, and I'd hate to see what they fight like when they don't have a witness. <laughs> um, however, they're a lot more polite. So the, the energy may be high, but the emotions are lower because, the, you know, they're paying me to sort of support yeah. them. So you can slow down the um, escalation of a problem. Um, Having said that, uh, I, I appreciate what you said, and I think that's great you work that way. I work... I've found my work to be different. Mm. I've found couples come in because of relationship issues and then we discover what they 
uh, where they need to work on themselves individually. Mm. And yes, whilst we give well, tasks... I seem to them, well, I might keep one, but now I've learned, because don't forget, when you're doing individual, you can't bring the individual session into the couple session. That's right. Because, as you know... It, it, I book a different session. I see couples but by what themselves... I mean, but what I mean is the information that you learn in the individual session. No, yeah, I have, that's right. I have my couples. I used to do each individual and couples of the same fam, same relationship. However, I found that it was more advantageous if they both had their external therapists. So there was almost like, I, I think of myself as like a food group. You know, you need lots of food groups. Like I provide the, I don't know, the red wine and the beer. I don't know. <laughs> the red red wine and dark chocolate. Um, and they need someone else that, that will be able to support them on their journey. Because my role as, an, as a couples therapist is that third entity. Yeah. So, but you, you could know, also yeah. see it, like, like, for example, if I have a, a couples and one of them has an anger issue. Yes. Then... I think it's important for that one to, if I'm, if I'm the therapist that's got skills in managing anger, which I just happen to, so there's an advantage there, then I'll see them by themselves just for their own anger issues. Because with or without the relationship, yeah. that's a personal issue that they need to work I agree. On. And, and, I, and I get covered. And I get all my couples that yeah. normally my couples will come in either from another couple or from their individual therapist. So if, and I like to have both individuals in, in therapy when I'm working with them so that, because there's always, as you know, there's a, you know, someone gets ahead of the other, the learning, the learning curve is, isn't the same, but there's one thing I'd like to, to mention. There's a really, really good, um, we we're talking about patterns before. If people Google, a, B, C, D sheet. Okay, now cognitive behaviour therapy, CBT, have this really good... Um, yes, I know that one. Yeah, so, so the, and I use it quite often, especially with patterns. If, you know, if someone says this normally happens in a relationship, when I'm in a relationship, that's a pattern. So, and, and with an A, B, C, D sheet, the A is the event or the activating th uh, thing. So it might be, he yell, when, he, when he yells at me, the B is... I get frightened, the consequences are I cry and I withdraw. So you've got your A, B, C. The D is looking back at it from a different, like, you know, looking back after and go, okay, what could I have done differently? And sometimes it's about recognising the start of the the pattern. So for me, if someone yell, used to yell at me, so there's a bug around the room. Um, if someone yells, yelled, used to yell at me, I would get really frightened and I'd start crying and I would just emotionally and physically withdraw. And now I know that it was because my father was a very angry man. And so it wasn't safe for me to be around someone yelling. Now I know if someone yells, like I get clients yell at me all the time in the clinic, um, so to speak, or people yelling at each other. Um, so now it's like, okay, I'm an adult, I'm safe. So I now have broken that pattern and I don't react to someone yeah. yelling, I'm proactive and I behave or respond differently. That's really, really handy. A nice model to show to clients. Yeah, and I have I have a whole pile of different handouts that I use for like air quotes, homework, and that's one of them, um, you know. But look, you know, with couples, it's it's about what you put in or what you expect out of a relationship has to be overt. It has to be obvious. It has to be spoken about. If you want support, you have to explain and discuss what support looks like to you. Not he doesn't support me or she doesn't understand me. It's like, well, yeah. she may never understand you. He may never support you in the way you expect to, unless you say support to me looks like you come in, you put your handbag, your, your, your bag down, you sort, seek me out, you, you, I, I call it plug in, you reconnect, you touch, you kiss, and then you go get changed, do what you've got to do, then you come back and if there's kids involved, then you, you know, do the, the family thing. Mm. But it's about, you know, we all have so many hats and we can't just keep putting hats on and off. We have to have like a, 
an airlock of, you know, like a, 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 an astronaut, you know, he gets all geared up and then he goes into an airlock and then the, you know, the atmosphere, you know, equalizes, he goes out and does his job or she goes out and does, and does her job, comes back in, the airlock closes, it decompresses, then they come out and they into the real, into their current life. And people ex just expect everyone to just come rushing in the door and be the person without taking the context of that airlock, that debrief, mm. that, you know, it, and it's, it's another thing that we, I do a lot of, but it's important to have um, strategies because as you know, our role is to become redundant. We're not yeah. supposed to, you know, we're not like a hairdresser for the next you know, 20 years, we're going to have someone coming in every six weeks. Our role is to be totally um, without use because we've, we've reconnected them with their own coping skills, their own strategies. They, they personalise the information we give them, make it relevant to their relationship and their needs, wants and desires. And then they're our best advertisement. That's perfectly said because it is really important that we teach them the skills in the gap that they're missing at this moment right now. But right. another very important thing that I've noticed through um, our conversation is both you and I come from an NLP background. Mm. And so that's why it's extremely important. And I've noticed you do the exact same thing as I do. We listen for the language and how they speak. And like you said about five minutes ago, where one may complain, he doesn't listen to me, he doesn't understand me. They're globalizations. So it's really important we stop them at that sentence and say, how specifically? Yeah. And same with their goals. It's not, people will come and say, oh, I just want to be able to communicate better. What does that mean for you? That's Tell me crazy. exactly what that means. And what it's like saying, I want a car. And you go, okay, what do you want a car for? And this is a metaphor I use it in the clinic. They'll go, you know, I'll go, okay. That's like saying I want a car. Okay, what sort of car do you want? Oh, I just want a car. Well, what are you going to use it for? Oh, just around. The, so do you want a big car, a little car, diesel, electric? How far are you going to drive? How many kilometers? So it's about drilling down and having each other be very specific. Mm. And, you know, not saying, oh, whatever you want, whatever you want. Because then again, that takes us back to our self-belief of not mm. maybe... Women tend, tend to have not, don't seem to have a very good sense of internal worth. And so they won't voice what they actually need for fear of rejection. And I suppose that's, that's for another, you know, we can talk about codependency, which is yeah. another lovely, meaty subject we can get into. And then also the other thing that I do, which is the, the context of knockdown rebuild. It's, it's, it's too late now to get into it this time. We'll However, do an episode on that next yeah i think that would be nice because i think it helps people to understand that staying in a relationship for the children or i love them um are not valid reasons to stay in a relationship because we're teaching our children what dysfunction that dysfunction is normal and yelling and screaming and that sort of stuff or withdrawing and silence and the sulking and that as normal and uh, because our, we are role modeled what a relationship looks like we, we're not born to know what it, I, I don't what think it's... people realize that kids do adjust they can adjust and oh, it does more harm to children to keep them in a dysfunctional relationship yeah. as role yeah. models than to take them out and I say this confidently I've been in the early childhood industry since 1997 yeah. when so you're in I that... know sorry <laughs> When you're in nappies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was just born, right? <laughs> Thanks for that. Just born and I had all this knowledge, right? And I've seen mm. tens of thousands of people go through my early learning centres. I've seen them break up. I've mm. seen them in all conditions and all and different don't stages. And blossom when they've got two happy parents in separate locations. They blossom. They adjust. It's it's all about adult interaction. Now, if the kids are going to be there watching mum and dad fight, mm. isn't it nicer to watch mum by herself, happy and content and safe, and dad by himself, happy and content and safe? So yep. I'm not I'm not saying that. I mean, there's arguments either way, but when it comes to that, I really believe children adjust. They really can. Oh yeah. 
Well, they do. They have, they learn rules of, they can do at home, at grandparents' places, at aunts' places, at school, at friends' places. So I call, like, I, used to, I call them Gumbies. Remember the Gumby toy? It was like a, a little, you know, rubber man you could bend around and tie into knots. So, yeah. So I think what we've established today, we've brought out, we've just jimble jambled everything and it was great. I think it's a really nice way to just have this conversation because this, we're, we're, we're so organic and we're so natural today. We're not reading a script or anything like that. It was all about, we're two professionals. We're looking at couples and they're coming for relationship counselling. And we just looked at um, communication techniques. We've established Listen, listen, and listen. Do not talk at the same time. We need to listen to one another. Think before being you present. speak. Mm. Be present and listen. Yeah, of course. Hear what's being said. And even then, you may not totally understand the other person. You can say something to me, and I may interpret that differently. My perception can vary. You and I, Tony, we can watch a movie and come back and we can summarize it differently. So we've got oh, yeah. to allow and that things happen differently in each other's worlds. And I think that the easiest way to encapsulate that is if I say the word pink, what's the first thing you think of? Fairy floss. I think of the singer. Now, if one word oh. can be interpreted so many... Look, I thought of your thing. Well, you've got... I had one husband one day say nipples. So, oh, nice. <laughs> So what I'm saying is if one word can be interpreted so many different ways, what happens with a sentence? And with facial expressions. Oh, that's so, our non 93% of our communication. Okay. Namaste. <laughs> yes. So we need to be sincere. We need to observe. We need to be very mindful of our body language. We are not experts in reading our partner's body language. We assume. We are experts in our own body language most of the time. We need to respect that we can agree to disagree. Just yeah. because we are in a relationship, it doesn't mean that we see eye to eye or that what you like, I like. I yeah. learned many years ago or I read somewhere that the most healthiest relationships are those in which, in which each individual is free. Yes, that's free right. Inside. There's choice. Yeah. But it's also if you can't have that relationship with yourself, how can you have it with anyone else? Absolutely. And self-love comes in nicely there. We need to love and respect ourselves. Now, I like to teach people, how do you speak to yourself? Because it's really important that you realize that you are the one person that was there from the day that you were born and you'll be there till the day you die. So speak to yourself like you speak to your best friend. So, you know, that critical voice and the negative talk, I try as fast as I can to teach clients to get rid of that, even if it's a lifelong pattern. Mm. Start from now doing different kind of talking to yourself. That'll mm. take you a long way. And that helps evolve new language when you speak to someone else. It's all about yeah. self-respect, self-love, self-compassion, empathy, all of those wonderful ingredients that you want to receive from somebody else. And I think if you take it back, you know, it, I teach the world how to treat, my, treat me by the way I treat myself. If I don't treat myself with love and respect, why would anyone else? That is such a beautiful saying. My, a cousin of mine, he's a master. He's a black belt in, in um, Kung Fu. And he said to me once, oh, you teach people how you want to be treated. And let's be honest. If someone treats me a certain way, it's because I allow that. And if someone else doesn't treat me that way, it's because I haven't allowed that with another individual. Mm -hmm. So it's quite true. So mm -hmm. that, that holds great value. I wrote a book not long ago. It's for kids and coping skills. And one thing I'll pull out of that to bring that into this session is it's about siblings and rivalry. So one sibling totally freaks out because brother or sister comes into the room and plays with one of their things. So they scream the house down as some siblings do. Yet, when their friend comes over, plays with the item, the same item, they give no reaction whatsoever. Mm. You are in charge of all of your reactions and responses. So if you do want to change and be the, be the better version of you, it's all a matter of decision. Mm. Yeah. Assess yourself and you decide how you want to be. And you can start practicing that new way of being from now. If you look at Robert Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he, he talks about circle of influence and circle of concern. So I think of it as an egg. You crack an egg, 
and the yoke is your circle of influence, which is self, and the circle of concern is the white. So everything outside yourself is in the white. So when you're struggling with the way your, your sister or brother or aunt or uncle or father or mother are behaving, you can't do anything about that. You've got to bring it back to yourself. Why do I feel like this? Well, it's wrong. Well, that's in your world. It might be wrong. It may not be in theirs. If, if, you, if you enable that behaviour, if you don't say, no, I'm not going to be part of that, and it doesn't have to be hands up. It could just be, you know, not saying no when they say, oh, can you come over now? I need your help. Well, no, now's not convenient. I can come over at three o'clock. No, no, no. I need you now. Well, I'm sorry, then I can't help you. Yeah. then you're enabling that behavior and you're con within yourself you're enabling that discomfort that's right well yeah. said well tony i think with the speed of your speech today <laughs> i apologize i get excited no you i think you've condensed three hours of knowledge and experience down to a, a, a quick 35, 40 minutes, and I really appreciate your time. I hope our listeners out there have gotten something valuable out of today. Today, mm. like I said, we just narrowed down to relationships and communication. And I think mm. it's really nice to have two experts just share some insight of what's worked, what's not worked, and a bit of advice here and there. So, Tony, mm. I thank you so much, and I really look forward to I jotted down that we will do Knock Down and Rebuild. Is that right? Yep. So maybe yep. we'll do that next time. Sounds great. So any final words from you, Tony? Um, go out and start listening instead of using your voice. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'll do the same too. Thank you very much. Thanks for the time. <laughs> All right, Tony. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Okay.